What up, what up, what up? Happy Friday night, everybody. How you guys doing? Hope you are having a great Friday night. Or whenever it is that you're ending up watching this video. Hope you had a great week. And uh, yeah, I want to talk to you about something a little bit more specific tonight. We're going to get into talking about Kytec and some of their soft plastics. Okay. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with Kytec or Kytec. Uh, however, you might pronounce the Japanese lure maker. But um, there's really one bait on the market that they are famous for. And we're going to talk about that one first. But then I'm going to roll through a handful of other baits that you may or may not already be familiar with and uh, show you how I prefer to rig them and what I use them for and what time of year, etc. And uh, we're just going to kind of roll through it. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, let me know. What's up, Peyton? Wonkfish, I'm not going to forget your name or Abe if granddaddy hops in here. So. How you doing, Peyton? I got your message, and um, I think I responded to it. I just haven't had an opportunity to send out your package just yet. So, um, Owen, what's up, man? How you doing? Happy Friday night to you. My screen only shows that there's one person in here, yet there's two of you guys contributing in the chat. So, whatever. I'm not going to really pay attention to that. Not too important. So, um, anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. We're going to talk about Kytec soft plastics to start out. Um, I've got five in particular that I think are my favorite that you guys should have if you don't um, and should be aware of. And then I'm going to throw in two kind of bonus ones that I also use, just not quite as frequently um, and wouldn't necessarily say that they're at the absolute top of the list just because they're either uh, more difficult to acquire or they're a bit more specialized in nature. Matthew, what's up, man? How you doing? Not too much over here. I just got my kids down to sleep in the last hour or so. Uh, my daughters took a while to put down, and then my son had a big old meal and, uh, well, bottle, I should say, and then it took him a while to fall asleep as well. So I'm hopping on here just a little bit late, but thought I would hop on nonetheless and uh, and hang out for just a little bit or however long you guys want to hang out. So uh, first bait that we're going to talk about, and dang, I can't believe I didn't even think about this guy. I'm going to need to add that to this list uh, that didn't even jump into my head when I was making this, this short little top five. Um, it's not even a top five, but just five baits that um, – you should know about and should be fishing that are made from Kytec um, and that are soft plastic specifically. So first and foremost, Peyton says, great topic for the stream because I just watched a Tackle Warehouse video about Japanese baits. Cool, man. Cool. Um, Matthew says, good man. Fishing's been tough for me this week. Almost had a good fish today on the Tiny Clash, but she stopped following. Yeah, it has been kind of a weird week. Uh, at least for me too. It's been super hot here in Colorado and uh, the fish have turned off a little bit. So I had two good days. Um, one that was actually quite good and we can talk about that a little bit later. But um, yeah, fishing's been a little bit wonky the last week or two. So first bait we're going to talk about is the ever famous Kytec Swing Impact Fat. So uh, it almost needs no introduction. You guys should be familiar with this bait already. This is a almost the industry standard of soft plastic paddle tail swim baits these days. Um, this bait has a lot of tail kick to it. As you can see, um, it bends over quite a bit. So you do need to be, um, a little bit wary of just how big of a hook that you rig on these things. But what's cool about them is that they come in almost every size you could imagine. 
ranging from as little as 2.8 inches, which in my opinion is a bit small, all the way up to a 7.8 inch, which is absolutely giant and in my opinion, a little too big. So uh, that said, I fish everything in the middle there. So I've got kind of a, a dedicated go-to box that um, I will bring with me if I know that I'm going to be fishing swim baits primarily and I feel like this is going to be the best swim bait for the job. Um, so I've got Kitex Swing Impact Fats in the 3.3, the 3.8. Um, I don't usually carry the 4.3 with me. Um, I, I just kind of step straight up to the 4.8 inch. And then I've got the 5.8s um, in the remainder. Now, I do have some 6.8s uh, right behind me. And I showed you guys uh, this one that's rigged up on an owner beast ADOT hook. Um, again, this is pretty big and a little bit more specialized that I will throw early season or late season when the water is colder and just slow roll this thing along bottom uh, to imitate larger prey. But if you're using a soft plastic swim bait day in and day out, uh, each one of these sizes really has an application. And the reason that I've gone ahead and done this, I don't know if you guys can see just from uh, what's through the box, but I've actually cut up the clamshells themselves into pieces of two. So this way I can still protect the tail and then fit them in the box. Now, of course, you can't fit um, nearly as many baits in here as you would um, if you just loaded these compartments. However, you're going to destroy the baits much quicker, especially uh, if you're bringing a backpack uh, or you're fishing out of a boat and you're storing these vertically. But um, that's something to be aware of. You want to usually keep these baits in their clamshells like I've got up here on the racks behind me. So um, I have kind of made a hack. I made a YouTube video about doing this specifically a couple years back. And um, this is something that I do for both my Kitex and my Raid Swimmers. And um, yeah, two main ways that I like to rig up the Swing Impact Fat. Three, really. Uh, one I already showed you is just on a standard belly-weighted swim bait hook. And typically speaking, the Owner Beast is my favorite. Um, and the reason for that, no focus. The reason for that is the placement of this weight being on the bottom of the hook. So when you do set the hook, it's going to slide all the way down. Um, however, you're going to get a better balance than, you know, some like the, the Gamakatsu hook um, has the weight here up forward on the shank of the hook and um, doesn't allow it to kind of press down quite as well. Uh, every keel weighted uh, hook is going to be a little bit different, but I like uh, the placement of the weight. And then of course, you know, that needle point hook that, um, that owner does so well. And um, of course they created the, the centering pin spring that now everybody kind of has has created their own version of, but I still think that owner and their centering pin spring is the best. Uh, so of course you, you'd size down from that eight aught on the six point eight to like a six aught on the five point eight. Um, maybe even stay with the six aught, but probably drop down to a four aught on the four point eight and the three point eight. Um, you know, they, they don't make a five aught in the owner beast. So sometimes what I will do is actually switch over to the trocar um, mag swim bait hooks. Now, what you'll notice about this one is it does not have a weight on it. So uh, I'm going to show you guys something that might be one of the more valuable things in this live stream tonight. Um, And I'm going to use a black one because I just got these recently and I've been wanting to uh, to get out and fish them anyway. So might as well rig one up 
and uh, and just plan to use it soon. Anyway, so this is the 4.8 inch, and like I said, a, a, an ideal size hook for this would be somewhere between a 4 aught and a 6 aught. A 4 aught might be a little bit small. A 6 aught would probably be big and start to impede um, the action of the bait. So, in my opinion, a 5 aught is really the best size and is going to cover this much bait right here and just get to the point where you're covering enough body uh, so that you're going to have an ideal hookup ratio, but not too much. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna show you. Um, assuming I've got the right materials. If you guys would check out Kytec, and I don't think it's on their packaging, they don't have like a how-to rig on here, but they do on their website, and you might find this information elsewhere. But um, these baits are designed really intelligently. Um, you know, as you guys know, the Japanese are quite a bit more sophisticated in their lure designing abilities. So um, not only, come on. I'm sorry, guys. Matthew says that silver flash um, is my favorite pattern in the Kytex, especially the 6.8 and 7.8. Yeah, it's a great color for sure. Glad you like the idea for storage as well, man. Yeah, Peyton, you should give it a shot sometime. Okay, so not only do you have the belly slot on top of the bait so that your beast hook can just rest in here. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but you don't have to have this thing skin hooked or tech exposed. So the hook will actually just sit in there. And so you don't have to tear up the bait, ruin it at all. Um, it's very well designed. It's just deep enough to let the hook sit in there um, and stay weedless. And of course, it's got a great ribbed body design. A very unique tail kick to it but the other thing that you guys may or may not be aware of um, in terms of the design is on the belly so first of all you know it shows you just how far the hook should be coming somewhere between here and here is where the hook should be coming through the back or through the belly and then out the back um, but if you guys notice, there's two holes right here. And they're actually just slots. They're not actually hollowed out or anything like that. But what those are there for is for you to put nail weights into the bait. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you and just show you what it looks like um, and kind of explain it. Now, these nail weights are a little bit big or a little bit heavy um, for these purposes. So you're going to see that it's actually popping out of the bait just a little bit um, on the belly. And technically it should be a bit more flush than what you see here. But here's the general idea is that you're going to put nail weights into the belly of the bait and then you're going to rig a weightless hook and I prefer something with a screw lock, like this Trocar Magnum swim bait hook. This is a 5 aught, And so then all you're going to do, like normal, is rig this bad boy. Screw it straight into the nose until it's all the way up. That's one thing I see some people doing wrong is that they don't screw the screw lock all the way up, um, which you would think is common sense, but some people don't do that. Um, and then last order of business is to line that up and bring it through the back of the bait. And I do like to take my time to make sure that I'm rigging this right. And it looks like I didn't quite rig it right. 
I grabbed too much of the plastic, um, just brought it straight through the back where I could come kind of one or two more notches forward. Um, and then here's what you're left with. Lots of gap on this Magnum swim bait hook. And what you'll notice is when you set the hook, the hook is going to be able to clear right in between those nail weights and you're going to get a lot more bite when you set the hook than you would with like that owner beast. And I told you I choose that owner beast because I think it's got a great bite, but this is one way that you're going to get some remarkable balance and the best hookup ratio out there. So, um, of course, you could fish these weightless, but those those slots on the bottom of the bait are made for nail weights specifically. So, anyway, um, that's something that you guys should be aware of and a pretty cool rigging that uh, I feel like not that many people are utilizing. On the, the swing impact fat is putting the nail weights in those slots um, that are designed to take nail weights, okay? So, again, I'm going to take these out because these nail weights are just a little bit long. What I'll do instead of using these tungsten nail weights is take some of my lead nail weights and I will cut them down to size so that they fit inside the bait and are a little bit more flush. Um, when I rig this up, ready to fish. So, um, you know, here I thought I was going to rig it up and, and, you know, use it in the next outing or two when I've got an opportunity, but I'm actually just going to put it back in the package and, uh, not hang it up, but set it down to remind myself for another time. So there's two of the riggings, um, of, of the three of how I prefer to fish that, and last is on a swim jig, okay? So two are standalone, and one is on the back of a jig. And this is specifically the Kitek, um, I want to say it's called the Model 3 swim jig. I've got another one sitting here somewhere, and I could show it to you guys if, uh, if I could find it in this giant mess that I've got. Uh, does it say model three swim jig, three eighths ounce black. This fits a, yeah, it's got a five aught hook and fits the swing impact fat 4.8 inch perfectly. So, um, that's what this is right here. This is the 4.8 inch in that silver flash color, uh, that I showed you earlier. And, um, it's got an interesting keeper on it that looks like a you know a plastic screw actually um so technically it's a screw lock keeper but not really um and then it's got the weight here on the chin um, only thing i don't really love about it is that the line tie is totally exposed so you you will pick up a little bit more in the way of weeds when fishing this swim jig but I tend to fish this more the same way, like I mentioned, um, in fishing this along the bottom instead of um, in the middle of the water column or through heavy weeds. Um, you'll just get the secondary action of the skirt itself, which on these jigs is fantastic. Um, you know, the skirt material of these jigs is kind of second to none. Absolutely lovely, beautiful colors, and uh, super high quality silicone. So you get a tungsten weight here. Um, so if you're bumping bottom, especially fishing around uh, smaller rock on bottom, it's a great swim jig to use. And uh, those are the three main ways that I prefer to fish the Kitek Swing Impact Fat, especially in that 4.8 inch size. Um, I will throw like the, the smaller 3.3 inch um, and sometimes the 3.8 inch um, just on a straight exposed jig head. 
something like the the striking squadron head. Uh, there's a lot of different jig heads that I would use. You know, just a round ball uh, gamakatsu jig head. Um, there's there's a million different ways uh, jig heads and ways to rig the bait itself. But those smaller ones, I tend to fish it as a, a standalone swim bait um, on an exposed hook and, and fish that up shallow where I see bait um, and where I know that fish are busting on that bait. Then right in that 3.8 inch size to the 4.3 makes a great trailer on a swim jig, on a chatter bait if you're going to rig it upside down or if you're going to cut the tail off. Great ways to use that bait. And then once you get bigger and you're at the 4.8, the 5.8, the 6.8, and the 7.8, all are best, in my opinion, on like that owner beast, um, fish weedless, low and slow for the most part. So let me catch up on some of these comments. I am sorry um, that I'm a little bit behind on them. Matthew says, I make my own weighted hooks with owner beast hooks without the weights. Right on, dude. Neil Bone and Ron Holly, what's up, guys? How you doing tonight? Ron says, whose thumb is not up? That's funny. Uh, that's true, though, guys. There's eight people in here, four thumbs up. Do me that quick favor while you're in here. Hit that thumbs up button, and uh, let's get that number up real quick, but no big deal. Neil, thank you so much for asking. Um, Wills is doing better this week. You know, he's healing pretty well. He, you know, his head is still scabbed up and stuff, and we're having to put some, you know, Vaseline type cream on it and, uh, and therefore wash his head a little bit more frequently than we would typically do. We usually only bathe him every few days or so, but, um, we're at least having to, to wash his head every day, but his energy is great. His feeding habits, his sleeping habits for the most part are all pretty, uh, pretty standard. So no real worries, um, at least at the moment. So I would appreciate your guys' continued thoughts and prayers uh, regarding that, but all is good, man. Thank you. Matthew says, I didn't even know this until I went to open my pack of Kytex and just looked underneath. I never noticed them until now. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm telling you. Uh, a lot of people fish the Kytex, but not a lot of people actually look into um, the way and just all the detail that goes into the design of the baits. So those two slots. Um, on the bottom of the bait are designed for nail weights to be inserted and you actually use a weightless EWG style hook um, for the best hookup ratio and balance of the bait. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, Vince, any thoughts on the Booyah Pad Crasher? Yeah, great frog. Uh, really solid, man. I, I use it. A fair amount. In fact, I just doctored one up um, the other day. I think it's still up in my office right now, but um, it's arguably one of the best bang for the buck frogs on the market. Good hookup ratio, soft body. Um, the hook is solid. I really like how tight to the body it is. Uh, that frog stays pretty weedless and you can fish it in a lot of different ways because of its profile. It's not too keeled. Um, I'm not going to pull them out right now because we're not talking about frogs at the moment, but um, you can fish that frog on mats and you can also fish it in open water or along weed lines um, quite well. So good frog. In fact, I think it's a really good starting point frog, um, especially for people who say are not as comfortable forking um, as much money up for good frogs, you know, but once you're ready, you just step up from a, a pad crasher at seven bucks to a whole host of other frogs in the $10 range, um, ranging from the Strike King Sexy Frog to the Spro Bronze Eye Frogs to the Six Sense Vega Frogs to the Jackal Gavacho and Kara Frogs. Um, you can get a lot of really good frogs for 10 bucks. And so, you know, it's hard to justify buying and using 
pad crashers like exclusively, though they are good frogs, right? So don't get me wrong. Okay, let's move on to bait number two. And uh, actually, these first three baits are all going to be in the same category of soft plastic swim baits. So next up is the swing impact. Okay. Um, you guys probably already know about this one too. This is a bait that they make in almost as many sizes as they do the swing impact fat. Um, it's a really interesting bait. Um, it's more of a worm with a boot tail on it. Okay. So the swing impact is not fat. Hence the name. It's just swing impact, not fat. Um, and as you'll see, these tails get a little bit more twisted up, which can be annoying. Um, one, they're doing that because I've got them loose in this box, which I just said I intentionally do not do with my swing impact fats and that you should keep them in the clamshells. But one thing to be aware of is that Kitek sells these baits in a clamshell where the tails are not protected. So kind of disappointing. Um, so you will get baits that come straight out of the package and have a twisted tail. So I don't love that, um, to be honest with you. It's part of the game, but these are great baits to fish in a slightly different way. Um, now they make them in all the great colors and they make them in great sizes too. So you can buy these, I think all the way down to like two inches, really tiny guys. And then all the way up to, um, I don't know if this is a four and a half or a five and a half, but, um, they make them pretty large as well. So here I've got this rigged on, I think this is an owner uh, weighted EWG. It's got that, that centering pin spring as well. Um, just not quite as much bite or gap, but it's not nearly as necessary with this bait. That's not as fat. Okay. So like I said, this bait has much more of a worm profile and, um, and it can be fished like a worm. So, um, you know, I fish these mostly in the three and a half four and four and a half inch sizes. Um, this is the three and a half inch size and I will throw it on a small jig head or rig this on a drop shot most of the time. Um, great if you fish a drop shot and swim the drop shot. Um, you know, power shotting is kind of a newer technique. Uh, not a lot of people do it. But it's a great way to keep your bait up off the bottom and reduce snagging and losing quite as many baits and hooks. Of course, you'll still lose weights, but um, the different presentation when you're making sure that you're really controlling the depth up off the bottom. So uh, swimming a drop shot is a great option for this swing impact. Um, but I also will throw it as a trailer. So one thing that I will do, um, and I talked about this very recently is I will just come all the way to the tail and just rip the tail off itself. So literally just the tail. So you still have this tail section, which might be a little bit bent, but not a big deal. And then I will rig this on the back of a chatterbait. And so you're going to get a lot of wag and a very natural kicking action on the back of a chatterbait. Um, really, really like that. In fact, I will show you um, how to rig that up in a minute. But the other thing that I will do is cut just a little bit more of the tail section off so that it's almost down to that first rib. And then here you just have a worm. So now it's closer to a three and a half inch bait instead of a four inch. And, um, and this can be fished on a wacky rig. It can be nose hooked on a drop shot. And, um, you know, really the, the possibilities are endless in terms of how 
You might want to fish this. You could Nico rig it, throw it on a shaky head, whatever. But um, awesome finesse fishing bait. Now, once you get up into the bigger sizes, like this four four and a half inch bait, it does get quite a bit fatter. Okay, let me show you. Here's the four inch, and here's the four and a half inch. And uh, the four inch is really pretty skinny and small, and that four and a half inch is quite a bit bigger. This is almost a standard size swim bait um, in terms of the profile. So that's something to keep in mind um, that as you step up in size with that swing impact, the size difference um, is pretty noticeable. So the three and a half inch is really small, and I will almost exclusively drop shot that thing. The four inch I will throw as a trailer, and then I will also modify it by cutting off the tail and using it more like a worm. And then that larger four and a half inch I throw pretty much as a standalone swim bait on a jig head. Now, if you're using it as a, a swim bait, Keep in mind that there is a lot of tail kick to this bait. So it is a warm water swim bait um, almost exclusively, okay? Now, like I suggested with the swing impact fat, fishing that in cold water and super slow along the bottom, I would not do the same thing with the swing impact um, because it's going to roll over on its side more because it's so floppy. It's not going to balance nearly as well. So you will need to fish the bait a bit faster and it is going to kick all over the place. So um, one cool thing that Kytec has done in the last oh two years or so has come out with a saltwater series of the Swing Impact Fat. I've got one pack back here um, of the fats and one here of the original Swing Impact. And um, let me just show you side by side the difference that you get between them uh, because there is quite a bit of difference. It is the same exact design, same profile and everything. This is the, the four inch, okay? Um, but what you get is a much stiffer soft plastic in the saltwater version. So where this original swing impact um, really bends all the way down halfway into the body and you're going to get a remarkable amount of tail kick, you will not get that same amount of action out of the saltwater version. You're going to get a, a little bit tighter of an action a little bit closer to the swing impact fat, but in a smaller profile. And it's also going to lead to a bit more durability. There's not as much salt in these baits. Now, keep in mind, it is made for salt water. So they don't make these in all the same colors that you can find the original swing impact fats or the original swing impacts in. Uh, they are like salt water colors. So um, there's only really two, in my opinion, that are good crossovers. And first is this chartreuse pearl, which is like a 50-50. And the other is just a straight pearl white. Otherwise, you're going to get like nuclear chicken. You're going to get pinks and oranges and um, all sorts of, you know, root beer, sparkle, different colors that are more made for the salt. So. Um, here we've got a jackhammer chatterbait in chartreuse and white, and I'm just going to rig this straight on and then, uh, make the decision after the fact as to whether this is going to be best suited with the tail on or the tail off. So just going to thread this thing about halfway down. That slot on the back, push it up over the double keeper, kind of pull it a little bit to straighten it out. And here we go. And it is a perfect 
color match. Chartreuse on top, white on bottom. Absolutely love that. You can fish this with the tail on and it'll fish just fine or you can cut the tail off like I showed you. Take just the tail off um, and it will fish, in my opinion, just a little bit more naturally. So um, chances are I will cut that tail off when I fish this, but I'm going to leave this rigged up because as you guys know, and as I talked about recently, with anything that's not a LazTech, and you're using a jackhammer chatterbait, that double wire keeper will destroy your soft plastic bait as you go to pull it up off the keeper. It will just rip the entire top half of the bait um, and render it useless. So I'm gonna leave this on and this will be my first trailer on this bait. Now, uh, one big downside to using the swing impact, uh, especially as a chatterbait trailer, and really for the most part in general um, is going to be durability you know it's a thin bait that is highly salted and uh, it's going to rip up super quick so if you're fishing it on a drop shot um, or if you're wacky rigging the bait i would recommend using an o-ring uh, the other recommendation that i would have is using an owner cps spring so for example Here's what the package looks like for the owner CPS springs. You know, this says large size. I've got the large and the mediums here um, in this bag. The small ones that I have are actually upstairs in my office, but for the sake of just demonstration, let me show you what a medium CPS spring on this bait will look like, okay? Got a couple of them tangled up here. Just dropped one. So here's the spring itself. Cool thing about the owner CPS spring is it has this, this uh, nose to it that helps you get started. So literally you just poke that straight into the nose first before you get to screwing. Then you just screw this bad boy straight in, okay? And then what's cool here is you've got the line tie, if that's what you want to call it, um, sticking straight out of the tip of the nose of the bait. And then what you can do is take your hook, and I actually don't have um, a drop shot hook here close to me, so I'm going to use this tiny little weighted wacky hook just for demonstration purposes and you're just going to hook it right through there or through the middle so you're you're barely nose hooked there but you're through the spring so then when the the bear when the bait starts to tear the spring is gonna hold it together. So you're not gonna lose your bait nearly as quickly if you rig it like so. Obviously not gonna use the, that weighted wacky hook uh, in this situation, but that's one trick that you can use uh, when drop shotting this bait. <clears throat> one other thing that I uh, do recommend is using These hooks, I wish I knew what they were called, but owner makes a worm hook with that CPS spring on it, okay? So, awesome little deal there. Um, damn it, I think my dog is barfing upstairs. Either that or she's dreaming. Hard to tell. She's making a whole lot of noise. So anyway, just screw that bad boy straight up on there. And I'd probably use this one aught size on the smaller three inch version, to be honest with you. 
But check that out. You could rig that on a drop shot, and then you've got a weedless presentation that's also on a screw lock and therefore not going to tear the nose of the bait nearly as easily. So um, really like these hooks. Be pretty easy to find yourself if you're looking for them. They're made by owner. And again, I really like them in these smaller sizes like the one aught and even the two aught. So next bait. We just went through the swing impact fat and the swing impact swim baits. Let me catch up on comments real quick. Hasn't been a ton. Matthew says the easy shiners are packaged the same, but tails don't get messed up as much. And they're killer spinnerbait trailers. Russ, what's up? Yeah, Peyton, pretty sweet color match, huh? Ron says, hey, Russ. Um, so, as Matthew mentioned, the Kitech Easy Shiner is the third one I wanted to talk about. And as you can tell, I like this bait. And I, I also keep these in... Sorry if I just cut out for a second there, guys. But bait number three I want to talk about is the Kitech Easy Shiner. And um, as you can tell, since I've got a dedicated box for them, I like this bait quite a lot. And as Matthew mentioned, yeah, the tails don't get messed up nearly as easily. And it's not like the, the formulation of plastic is so, so different on these. But look. I've been storing these in this flambeau box, and the tail is not terribly messed up. So um, you can keep those in their clamshell, which is a whole lot like this one that I showed you that the swing impacts come in. It's pretty much the same package. So the tails do not come protected, but they don't get damaged nearly as easily. So I carry these in six different colors actually and i don't necessarily fish all six frequently i fish the white a lot i fish the black and blue a lot and as you can see this is probably my favorite way to rig this swim bait um, this is a vmc boxer jig head um, so i've just snipped off the very tip of the swim bait and rigged it so that it's flush up on there um, the boxer head has a small head. I like the angle of the line tie, and then it's got a, a big hook on it. And um, I'm just a fan of it, okay? So I've got two of them rigged up that way, actually. This is the, uh, oh, Matthew, help me out. It's the name of this color. I absolutely love it, but uh, it's not coming to me at the moment. I don't know. I throw that that you know green flash color. Throw the sexy shad, and then I also will throw the uh, blue chartreuse as well, depending on water clarity um so the easy shiner is an interesting swim bait for a couple reasons um one it has a a much more subtle tail kick to it so take a look at this it does still bend over a fair amount but when you compare it to the swing impact fat and the swing impact it's not nearly as much um, it's just really that top 25% of the bait, whereas the swing impact fat will go to about here instead of here, and the swing impact all the way down um, to like the dead center of the body. So um, the Easy Shiner is great. And again, just like the, the swing impact, they make this thing all the way down to like two inches and all the way up to eight inches. But the four inch is really the only size that I throw, and mostly because of its versatility. I can throw this just about any which way that I want. Um, I do throw it on just a straight exposed jig head like that VMC boxer head, 
quite a bit or just on a straight round ball jig head from Gamakatsu, usually one with a uh, like a, a one eighth or a three sixteenth ounce weight that has a three aught hook on it. And um, and I find that I get enough gap where I'm covering just enough of the bait to get a good bite. Um, this thing folds up really well in a fish's mouth. It is a pretty soft bait, um, but it's a little bit more durable than the others, and it's a great bait all around. So as you can see, it's got um, a ridge on top, just like the Swing Impact and Swing Impact Fat. So you can rig this weedless if you want to. It's got a, a belly slot, but um, it's not really dug out. So um, in my opinion, this is best rigged on an exposed jig head or as a trailer. Matthew says he likes to throw this on a spinner bait. Um, I usually don't fish spinner baits with trailers all that frequently unless it's just a straight worm. So I throw this on a swim jig or on a chatter bait. Um, if I'm using it as a trailer, but usually I'll throw this standalone. And um, what's cool about it is it's a great cold water bait uh, to fish higher in the water column. I'll fish that swing impact fat low and slow, and I will fish this thing a little bit higher in the water column if fish are suspended or if they're feeding up. And, um, and I wanna fish this a little bit faster. As you can see, it's got a much more narrow profile than the other baits that we've talked about. So this thing is going to have just a little bit more roll to it as it's swimming through the water. Um, but it's a great all year long bait. Uh, can't say enough good things about the Easy Shiner. Really like it. Again, you could rig it on a drop shot and swim it if you wanted to. Um, I just think it's best on a straight retrieve type of presentation. And that's just me. Yeah, Matthew, you're right. Electric shed. I don't know why that didn't come to my mind, but the electric shed is definitely one of my favorite colors. You know, it's like a like a ghost minnow type of, of color. Very transparent. And it's got that that purple and green flake in there and i absolutely love it very natural bait fish pattern um awesome for clear water so now that the swim baits are out of the way we're going to talk about a couple of other baits all made by kai Tech, okay peyton says what kind of conditions do you throw swim jigs because i've always thought that a swim bait would work better you know, um, that's a, a good question because honestly, a standalone swim bait and a swim jig will perform well uh, in the same situations a lot of times, provided that you are rigging a swim bait weedless. Um, a swim jig almost always is going to have a weed guard on it. And so it's going to be better in and around grass. That's the main difference between throwing a standalone swim bait and a swim jig is where you're throwing it, not necessarily um, conditions in the way of water clarity, water temperature, um, or what type um, of, of structure you're fishing around, but grass um, is the main thing. Now, the other thing is if you're trying to upsize your bite and the fish are feeding well, if you're getting bit, um, going to a swim jig can often increase the size of the fish that you're catching because it's going to have a secondary action, um, just like a jig versus a Texas rig. Um, anything with a skirt is just going to flow and pulse and give it that extra action to look a little bit bigger in the water um, than a standard swim bait um wood okay or just a standard jig head so th those are my main observations but um i tend to throw a swim jig around grass and heavier cover and i tend to throw a standalone swim bait 
um, when the fish are a little bit more pressured, when I need a bite, and when I'm not as worried um, or aware that there are, is grass or wood for me to get hung up on. Matthew says, swim jigs work amazing a lot of the time, anywhere near grass or cover, and they're killer if you get the right color and the bait. Um, that's what I've been smashing them on from the bank. Yep. Totally with you there, man. Um, let's move on. Okay, next up. Um, I want to talk about the frog. And uh, by frog, I mean toad, really. You guys know I like to fish toads. Uh, I've got a whole box of them. But um, this guy is called the Kitek uh, Noisy Flapper. Okay? And I'll just show you one of these up close. This is that that green flash color. Um, now, I, I didn't pick these colors for any particular reason necessarily um, other than just the general purpose um, of what I would refer to when, when frog fishing is that you kind of want one with a dark belly, one with a light belly, and then one with maybe a little bit of a chartreuse or a yellow belly. So um, what's cool about this bait is its versatility. Um, it's absolutely astounding what you can do with this thing. And let me see if I've got both things to show you. Um, now, of course, you can fish this thing on the back of a buzz bait like a lot of people would do. Um, a lot of people like to throw toads on the back of buzz baits, especially a skirtless buzz bait. But in my opinion, this bait is just a little bit bulky for that, a little bit heavy for that. Um, this thing was designed to be thrown by itself, but can do a lot more than that. A lot of people don't know about this bait, but uh, what I find really cool about it is it's not just a great toad, but if you look at it in reverse, it looks kind of a lot like a crawfish, does it not? If you're looking at it from this angle, does it not look like a flipping bait? Or like an awesome jig trailer. Now, if you're looking at it like this, of course, it looks like a like a toad, like a frog, right? So, in my opinion, it kind of looks like both. Like instead of this being the the tail of the toad, it's kind of the nose of a crawdad. So, pretty sweet. This bait was designed to be thrown um, as a topwater toad style bait and be able to uh, be fished really slow. It is a dual density soft plastic. So um, it is made to always, even if it lands on its back, it will roll over almost immediately on the retrieve. And this thing has a lot of kick to it. Um, they call it the noisy flapper. It is a little bit louder than what you get out of like a, a zoom horny toad, probably the equivalent of like a, a rage toad or the rage shad, very loud kick to it for a toad style bait, but you can fish it quite a bit slower because it's got a, a pretty neutral buoyancy to it because of those, you know, the top and the bottom are made from different densities of plastic. So, um, the way that it was is primarily designed to be rigged. I'm going to use this same hook from earlier that I was rigging on that that 4.8 inch swing impact fat, and this is the Trocar Mag swim bait hook in the five aught. And I'm just going to 
screw it straight into the nose. And this is where an owner's CPS spring comes into play just a little bit better than this screw lock on the trocar. So the reason I, I own those CPS springs is not only to, to do things like I showed you with, um, you know, those swing impact baits and kind of modify baits, but I will also switch out the hitchhikers on some of these other baits like the Gamakatsus, the trocars um, that do not have the owner CPS, but rather their own screw lock. I will switch that out and put the owner on there. So um, as you can see, top of the bait, just like the other ones that we've talked about, has that slot just ready to rock. So once you bring this thing through, you're going to notice right away that I do not have to tech expose this bait. It just lays right in there. Oh, well, was focused for a second there. So it just lays right in there and is weedless until you press down. Remarkable hookup ratio. Of course, this will soften up, um, you know, as you set the hook, catch a couple of fish. This will loosen up. Um, and just like any other bait, one trick to uh, to add a little durability, you can stick a toothpick, toothpick straight through the bait so it doesn't slide quite as much. Or you can put like a, a, a bobber stop on your hook and slide it there so it won't want to slide down quite as well. Um, but this bait was designed to be thrown on a weightless hook. So... Don't get me wrong, when you see that I'm using a weightless hook here, you do not need to use nail weights on this bait. Believe it or not, this bait by itself weighs over a half an ounce. So unlike other toads, <clears throat> you know, we can do a little experiment if you guys don't mind. I've got my scale right here, um, and I'll just do a quick comparison of a couple other Toad baits, okay? So, first would be the, the Zoom Horny Toad, which has those Ultra Vibe kickers on it. Arguably one of the most iconic um, toad style baits. 12.75 grams. That's a little heavier than I would have thought. Next up is the Stanley Ribbit. 12.1. Then we got the Rage Toad. Fifteen point three. Wow, that's heavier than I would have thought. Kitex sixteen point eight. And then, of course, you know, the Yum Tiptoed, 13.7. So, um, you know, all of these are, are relatively heavy toad baits, but the Kitek is the heaviest um, for sure. So, come on, baby, turn off. 16.8 grams by itself without a hook. You do not need to throw this on a keel weighted swim bait hook. Um, you don't need any extra weight. So it is heavy straight out of the package. It is a dual density soft plastic so that it will automatically roll over. It will not swim upside down um, on a straight retrieve, straight up. And because the top is, um, is lighter, or the bottom is lighter, sorry, this thing will stay up on the surface very easily when you're swimming this thing. So you can fish it much slower than you would with some of those other baits, which are also great. You know, the uh, the Stanley Ribbit and the Rage Toad have been some of my favorite 
um, toad style baits for a long, long time. You know, I would throw the uh, the Zoom Horny Toad on the back of a buzz bait. One, because of its keeled belly design. And two, uh, because of its more subtle kicking action and more streamlined profile. But um, the other way that this bait was designed to be rigged, okay, if you look at the shape of it, you'll notice it's got these legs and that's made to look like frog legs, right? But it has a second purpose. So check this out. This is the Stanley double take hook, which is designed to be used on the, uh, the Stanley top toad, which is a great bait. So this is essentially a Stanley ribbit, but a fat body that is a hollow body. And so you rig this thing on here. Um, it's got a, a double hook that will just rest under the body. Uh, so really cool design here. You screw that into the nose and then the hook just sits flush. Um, and you get kind of the best of both worlds. It fishes like a top water frog and will float on the surface. Um, so anyway, we're not talking about the top toad right now, but um, the reason I bring that up is because I use the hook that Stanley makes for that top toad. And this is called the Stanley double take frog hook. And um, a couple other companies make these these frog hooks, but I use the Stanley one, and it has a screw lock keeper, so you just screw this straight back into the nose, just like I did with that that Trocar Magnum swim bait hook. And check out how you do this. You're going to, to bring that all the way over so it's not punched through the bait. It's just coming around the back. And I think this is the 6 aught, if I'm not mistaken. I think they make this in a 5 aught and a 6 aught. So I could be wrong. But what's cool is that you can pull back and expose this hook straight into these legs. So can you see that? The hook I have now exposed into these ridges that are standing up that are made to imitate tucked in legs on a frog, okay? And so this thing is now totally weedless, but it's got a double frog hook on it now. And so then when you get a bite and you set that hook, you get double the bite. So pretty sweet way to rig um, this frog in particular. You can do it with some other toad baits, but again, another little design feature that Kitech put into this bait so that you can rig it two different ways with a single hook right down the middle and not even have to expose it. The hook point will just rest right in that ridge, or you can rig it with a double hook and tuck it right into these raised ridges. So, um, like I mentioned, the third way that you can fish this thing is Texas rigged with a bullet weight on the front or as a jig trailer. Uh, it's going to be a bit more bulky. You can throw this as a flipping bait. So, if you've got enough weight, this thing is going to fish just like a bulky crawd at and it's going to have a heavy amount of kick on it so really sweet bait the kitech crazy flapper if you guys didn't already know now you know i do highly recommend that you pick them up <clears throat> now while we're on the topic of flappers 
we should talk about the, the crazy flapper. I did not intend to talk about this bait, but that's just because it was an oversight. Not because it was intentional. Peyton says, I'm definitely sold on this bait. What's the best place to get it from? Um, that's a good question. Honestly, I don't really know that. Um, I know that you can buy them directly from Kytec. So uh, I've done that before, and that might be one of your best bets, especially if you're going to stock up on Kytec baits. Um, sometimes they will have some of their, their lures on clearance or on sale. And so sometimes I've done that and stocked up like these these crazy flappers, for example, um, I stocked up on like 10 packs one time when they were on sale for like $3 a pack. And uh, I haven't even gone through half of them just yet. So you can buy them at a lot of different places. Um, and you could probably find it from Tackle Warehouse. I don't know if, uh, if Discount Tackle has them or not, but if they do, they're going to be cheapest to buy at discount tackle okay because kytec baits in general are discounted from discount tackle um every day of the year why don't i just check real quick for you guys while we're on here i wish i could share my screen and pull it up but um yeah man discounted five dollars 35 cents from discount tackle right now um, it looks like they've got four colors in stock, the straight black, the green pumpkin frog, which is that one that I showed you, or no, I showed you the green frog, um, uh, Okeechobee craw and watermelon red pearl. So, uh, four colors in stock, $5.35 for a five pack. Pretty damn good deal. I want to say they retail for six or $7 a pop, but Discount Tackle is a good place to get them. Now, next up is the Kytec Crazy Flapper. This is a creature slash craw style bait that um, is extremely underrated. Most people don't talk about these, and I don't know if it's because they don't want the word getting out uh, or just because they don't know. But this bait is made in three different sizes, and they are all awesome. Um, this can be used in a wide variety of ways. You can use this as a flipping bait. You can use it as a Texas rig bait or as a jig trailer, um, chatter bait trailer, swim jig trailer, any which way you want. This would make a great wobble head bait as well, but super cool design to this creature bait that again is called the crazy flapper. So it's got two sets of kickers on it. You separate all of these and it makes it super crazy. Now you can leave the inside attached um, or you can just straight up remove these. And then what you get is something that looks a little bit more like this, more like a traditional craw. Um, usually I just fish it straight out of the pack uh, with all four of these, but with them all separated like I just showed you. Um, there's something about the appendages on this bait that um, move just the right amount of water, but leave for a pretty streamlined profile. So it still will go in and out of cover very easily. Now, there's a clear bottom and a top of the bait. Just like a lot of these other baits that I've showed you, it has that slit on top so that you do not need to expose the plastic. That hook point will just rest straight in there um, and keep the bait weedless. Um, I can't exactly tell you what the deal is with um, the chin here and why it's cut out there. Um, I feel like I knew at one point, but I don't at anymore. Now, you can remove this entire front section, and it'll give you a smaller profile, and essentially just like a chunk that will make a great jig trailer um, 
But if you're going to keep the entire profile, then it makes a better Texas rig or flipping bait. Um, so keep that in mind. This color here is called Saturday Night Special. That black and blue. They make some awesome colors of the Crazy Flapper. Uh, you know, I've got that bigger size in three different colors right now. The middle size is my favorite, and this is a 3.6 inch. And if you can't already tell, <clears throat> this is like a fire craw color. They call it Delta Red. But yo, paired up on a jackhammer chatterbait in the fire craw. I mean, it is a perfect match, okay? Red top, orange belly. This is a fire craw color. And with all that action that I showed you, um, it is an amazing craw profile with a ton of action. So that was my go-to um, earlier this spring as a fire craw jackhammer chatterbait trailer. Um, and I love it. Okay. Uh, Matthew says, have you tried any of the depths bull flats in the 5.8 inch? They're a big bass bait for sure. They're meant to be thrown weightless and it falls down like a bluegill. I've had so many uh, from an order mistake form. You have so many. No, I haven't tried it, man. Um, you want to do a little bait trade? I'll take some of those bull flats from you if you want to uh, to trade for something else, something that you like or that you've seen. Um, I'm open to it. Okay, so the crazy flapper. Tons of action. So like Matthew just mentioned, swim jig trailer there. Yep. Great swim jig trailer, great chatterbait trailer, and a great wobblehead bait, great Texas rig bait, great flip and pitch bait. Only thing about it, like you're going to find with all Kitech baits, is that with all that action, um, the sacrifice that you make is durability. So these are heavily salted baits, um, and unfortunately, they're not going to last super long for you. But they're high quality, and they're not all that expensive. Um, you get seven in a pack, and I want to say they're like five or six bucks. So you're paying less than a dollar a bait. Um, and for, for a JDM bait, that's really not that expensive, to be honest with you. Matthias, what's up, dude? Ron says, are you going to throw in a bunch of bait boxes on the next giveaway? I don't know what you mean by bait boxes. Um, I can I can make one of my next giveaways uh, like strictly soft plastics if you want. But no, remember, I'm going to I'm going to throw in this Jackal Kara frog. In my next giveaway, that's for sure. Um going to hook somebody up. This is one of the hottest frogs on the market. And uh, I just found a place that had a bunch of them in stock. So I picked up two of this color. This is the, the glitter bluegill color. And um, yeah, thought I'd just, you know, pay it forward, help somebody else out um, in acquiring an awesome frog. So last size that they make is the 2.8 inch. And this is cute, okay? Um, this is definitely my least used size. Um, it comes eight to a package versus seven in the 3.6 and six in the 4.4. But um, I will say right now that on the back of a small jig, especially like a, a striking bitsy bug, or, you know, the, the, the Booyah, um, you know, those, those small jigs that are right in that three sixteenths of an ounce. Um, this is a killer trailer. Um, I've got some underwater footage of these and, uh, 
I would say it is arguably my favorite jig trailer for a tiny jig. Okay. Justin, you're pretty late, man. I've been on for an hour and 15 minutes. So that's how late you are. Uh, but it doesn't matter how late you are, man. I appreciate you hopping in here, hanging out. So um, no problem, dude. Ron says, after watching your videos, I need space to put everything. Well, bait boxes. I'm not sure what you mean. Tackle boxes like these guys. Dude, you just got to get some baskets or something, right? I've got I've got tackle boxes all up in these guys too. Um, I've got them in here, 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 um, and everywhere that you can't see in this room as well. So the 2.8 inch size is the least versatile. You could fish this thing on like a Ned Rig style presentation or on a drop shot, though it, it is going to be um, a bit aggressive of an action, right? Um, sometimes with those presentations, you want a little bit more dead action um, and slower moving and often more buoyant or neutrally buoyant baits. Uh, the crazy flapper is not necessarily going to be that. So in my opinion, this small 2.8 inch size is best on a small jig, um, though I just haven't explored using it quite as much. So if you guys have ideas uh, about how else to use that bait, um, I would also just straight swim it. Uh, you know, like Matthew was saying, great swim jig trailer. I would also just throw it on a, a round ball jig head or um, or even like a, a weightless hook like I showed you with this, this one-aught owner and just swim it in the shallows and you'll get little fish to eat that. So, um, anyway, next up, because I could not leave out the crazy flapper. It's an awesome bait, especially in that 3.8 inch, 3.6 inch, um, just really super versatile bait. Love it. Justin's trying to change the topic right now. Says, you seeing any of the new stuff for my cast? Yes. Um, we will talk about that right when I finish up with these next two baits, which shouldn't take too long to talk about. Um, and I know that we're going to get a little bit of chitter chatter between Matthew and Peyton because Peyton says that new Berkeley Gilly is a definite must have for me. And that is arguably the most controversial bait. They came out at ICAST because it is a blatant knockoff um, of the Gill Flat, a Japanese bait already made by um, a company called Issei or Issei. I don't know how to pronounce them, but I S S E I. Um, they made that bait a long time ago. It's been on the market for a while, although it's the JDM market. It's not available here domestically. And, um, yeah, uh, people are making a, a big fuss about the ghillie coming out because it's a blatant knockoff. But we'll talk about that in a few minutes, okay? Um, next up, I talked about these on one of my last streams. And this bait is, is harder to get your hands on, for sure. It's not readily available at most retailers. But like I mentioned, you can find this on Kitex website. Um, if you are going to buy a bunch of Kitech baits, um, and they've got some that are discounted on their website, then I would recommend going there to pick these up if you're going to spend enough money to get free shipping. Otherwise, I don't know exactly where to tell you to get these, but um, Matthew would probably say you could get them from the hookup tackle. Maybe you can. And this is the Salty Core Tube from Kitech. They make this in two sizes. This is the 4.25, and this is the 3.5. Um, both are great baits. I slightly prefer the 3.5 uh, due to its size profile. But um, I'll just show you the 4.25 because it's a, it's a big tube. I thought I had one rigged here. 
Um, didn't I show you guys last time? Thought I did, but there are a couple things that make this tube different. First, just like all the other baits that we've talked about, as you can see, that is not a seam like you see on the belly, but rather a slit that is made for the hook to sit in. So you do not have to expose this bait. So that is the top of the bait. This is the bottom over here. So uh, you can straight up Texas rig this bait just like you would like normal and bring your bait out the top and let it rest in this slot. Um, I will say that the legs on these skirts, on these tubes, um, are higher quality than any other tube that I have fished. It's almost too nice. Like I, like I feel a little bit guilty fishing these things because it's so high quality. And of course, it's not going to focus for you right in this moment. There it goes. But they are just cut and poured to perfection. And the other thing, like I mentioned last time, is that this is not a hollow tube. The butt is plugged, okay? And inside this bait is pure salt. This is a heavy ass tube. So again, I will weigh this out for you right now when we were when we're on the stream. Um, because to prove my point, um, Kitech mentions that this bait is designed to be fished weightless. You do not need to add a bullet weight or an internal tube jig to this bait. 14.2 grams by itself. So that is a half ounce tube straight out of the package. Most tubes are like feather light. Um, I would say definitely less than a quarter ounce. And this is a half ounce straight up so um, you do not need to add a tube jig to this you can't add a tube jig internally because it's filled with pure salt um, i have cut these open before for the sake of taking pictures uh, if you check my instagram you'd be able to find it uh, if you probably search the hashtag on instagram salty core tube you'd find it um, but in you know kitech also has pictures of that on their website uh, where they show you the internals of the bait um, and that salt content. So <clears throat> what that butt plug does is allow you to rig this bait backwards, um, a.k.a. stupid tube. Um, and so you Texas rig it through the butt and bring the hook point out the nose of the bait. And so then when you fish the bait and pull it, it's going to pulse like a fleeing crawdad and then um, and then it's going to kind of backslide is what they call it. So it's going to go away from you. So you pitch this into cover and it's going to slide away from you into cover. So awesome for fishing around laydowns. Um, and heavy cover because it will go right into what you're fishing. So um, weightless Texas rig, throw it straight in there. It will slide in. You pull it out and it will backslide and pulse like a fleeing crawdad and then go right back in. So really cool bait, the salty core tube from Kitech. Um, not easy to find, but very cool bait. You guys are popping off in the chat. Matthew says, yeah, you can get them on the hiccup. On the hookup. <laughs> All right. Knockoffs, knockoffs. Let me just address what you guys are talking about. And we can we can chat a little bit more about it. But Matthew says, Mike should have never said what he said about it. Because he knows damn well it was a knockoff because he has Japanese friends that live in Japan and he knows the JDM stuff. I've seen him with depth stuff. And knockoffs shouldn't be something that's happening. I, I, I kind of disagree there, man. Um, 
And that's the issue. They needed to come up with original baits and new designs. Berkeley, Japan has no problem making new baits that no one else has. Um, Justin's kind of right that nobody's making original anymore. And that, that's a big point of mine. Neil says, I mean, Reaction Innovations came out with the beaver. So many other people have a beaver. It's just what happens in the industry. Zoom with the brush hog. I get why people are upset, though. Yeah, um, here's here's my kind of spin off to that point is why didn't people make a big fuss when um, the Tokyo rig came out a few years ago? That, that was the exact same thing. Mike Iconelli went to Japan. Has a number of times. Um, he's a tackle junkie, just like all of us, right? He sees what's popular, what's new, what's up and coming, what's working there, what's different than what exists here in the U.S. And as a smart businessman, he wants to bring some of those concepts here to the U.S. Um, you'll find in Japan just like you'll find here in the U.S., that lots of companies make similar baits from a same type of design, whether it's the Kitek Swing Impact Fat Swim Baits or the Beaver or the Brush Hog or a Finesse Worm or a Ned Rig Bait. Um, it doesn't quite matter what it is. Profile, design, action. I mean, you can go to the the Mag Draft. Um, it, it is endless. You can go to hard baits too, and it's it's all over the place, right? When something is successful or different, it's going to be replicated, not necessarily knocked off. Um, that said, when you're going across international waters, the concept of a knockoff isn't really even a thing because um, patent issues are not there. So I think it's just smart of Mike to bring that profile, that design that the Gill Flat has um, and have it produced here domestically. I mean, he did it with the Tokyo rig, um, had VMC make it, and nobody said anything like, oh, that came from Japan. Um, so what, you know? Matthew says, yeah, it happens, but it shouldn't. People have become used to companies copying other companies and accepting it. Plenty of JDM companies come out with new designs almost every year. Yeah, of course, there's always going to be new designs, but there's also going to be knockoffs all the time, um, as there should be, right? Happens with swim baits. Uh, so in this day and age, if you have something that is original and you want to protect it and you don't want somebody to knock you off, and you don't want somebody to profit on your idea, your design, you have to get a patent. Uh, it's just plain and simple what happens. You know, 10,000 fish um, making that headhunter bait that is somewhere between a mega bass dark sleeper and this Imakatsu stealth swimmer. Um, but it's really like a, a dark sleeper. And now there are a bunch of other companies, including Chinese companies, making the dark sleeper. Um, it's just kind of how the industry is going and how it's been for a while now. Um, and, you know, it's all the way down to terminal tackle and everything else. So um, there's very little that's original anymore. Of course, you can create a, a weird looking bait that is just uh, out there little bit different, but quite frankly, um, it's just a smart business move to use an idea that has worked elsewhere um, or already worked here in the U.S. from a different company and make your own version of it. We saw it with the Zayco uh, Chatterbait trailers. There are a bunch of baits like this now right? Z-Man makes the Razor Shads. Big Bite Baits makes the Kamikaze Swim On, um, and so on and so forth. There are a bunch of examples of this kind of thing. So 
Anyway, guys. Neil says, I'm sure Japan copies baits from America. Yeah, that's true also. For sure. All right, guys. Let's move on. And I would say instead of copying, Japan probably, uh, they just go out of their way, just like a lot of uh, JDM fishermen here in the U.S., like Matthew, uh, just tries for the sake of having something different, makes a point to acquire them. So I'm sure Japanese fishermen go out of their way to buy U.S. baits. Berkeley Max Scent, for example, but I think it's less common for Japanese lure manufacturers to knock off American lure manufacturers than the other way around. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more innovative and um, about integrity and quality than we are here in the U.S., and that's just kind of the way it is. Yo, where okay. Last bait from Kai Tech that I wanted to mention um, is the Easy Shaker. Cali, can you guys see that? Like some of the others, this bait is made in multiple sizes, ranging from oh a three or three and a half inch up to like a five and a half inch not quite the same range as some of those swim baits that I talked about but you get some options here in my opinion the four and a half inch um, is my go-to and the most versatile um, easy shaker is the name so what I tend to think of when fishing this bait is shaky head Nico rig Weighted wacky, wacky, drop shot. That is pretty much how I'm going to fish this bait. Um, and there are a couple of great design features in this thing. Just like you may or may not have been able to see on the swing impact swim baits, you'll see. In this ribbing on the top of the bait, there is a slot for the hook. So again, you can lay your hook there without having to tech expose the bait if you're using an EWG style hook. And it goes for, oh, I don't know, 25% of the bait or so. So that, you know, you can fit anywhere from a, a one-aught to a three-aught hook in this four-and-a-half-inch bait. Um, I would recommend doing something like I showed you with that swing impact bait that I essentially turned into this easy shaker and using like a screw lock in the nose of the bait if you're going to nose hook this thing um, or using an o-ring or something of the sort if you're going to wacky rig it because these are not super durable baits but uh, one way that you can fish this just like I mentioned with the swing impact is that you could fish this on the back of a spinner bait or the back of a chatter bait because it is just a straight tail worm that is made for a drop shot or a shaky head. And this is an awesome bait. It's got a neutral buoyancy. So when you're fishing this on a drop shot or a shaky head, it is going to have a little bit more of a suspending or a horizontal posture. So on a shaky head, it's going to sit more at a 45 than a lot of other shaky head worms. Um, on a drop shot, it will sit horizontal a lot longer than other drop shot worms. So this is in my arsenal of drop shot worms for sure. Love the action on it. Um, can't say enough good things about it. I've got... Um, Three or four colors of it. This is one of my old go-to drop shot boxes. I've got the Zoom Swamp Crawler. I've got two colors of that Easy Shaker here. It's the Bold Bluegill and the Pro Blue Red Pearl. I've got a couple of Robo Worms in the four and a half inch. 
and then the biospawn plasma tails in the four and a half inch um now last bait that i want to show you that is not worth talking about for a long time because it is super niche but is made by Kitek is the custom leech i don't even know how much they're making this bait anymore but this is a super thin super segmented leech style soft plastic made for a drop shot made to be nose hooked really good action on it really interesting profile and uh don't really hear anybody talk about the leech so the easy shaker though needs to be in your arsenal if you're not already fishing this bait um i've made a point to give some of these away in the past awesome nico rig bait shaky head bait drop shot bait straight up so that does it for all the kitek baits that i want to talk about um again i'll run through them real quick i'm not going to show you all of them again but three swim baits we started with the fat swing impact um which is the the most standard most well-known swim bait on the market when it comes to paddle tail swim baits um, and the the most popular bait that Kitek makes and often the only one that people know from Kitek then we move to the swing impact which is a much skinnier worm like version um, of a soft plastic paddle tail swim bait I don't know why they still call it the swing impact because it is quite a bit different but it is a ribbed rounded soft plastic swim bait a um, whole lot more action to it. So I tend to fish that as a warm water bait, but I will often cut off the tail on that mid-size four inch version and fish it as a trailer, uh, fish it as a worm instead of a swim bait. Uh, there are a couple different things I'll do with it. And then the Easy Shiner was the last one that I showed you. Again, that four inch size is my go-to. And I, I like to fish it as a standalone swim bait in colder water most of the time. It's like fishing a flat-sided crankbait because it's got that narrow profile, a little bit of body roll to it, and a more subtle kick because it's only that last, you know, 25% of the bait that has tail kick compared to the swing impact and swing impact fat that have a whole lot wider kick to it. Then we moved on to talking about the toad which is the Kitek Noisy Flapper, which is um, probably my favorite of the bunch in terms of design um, because it's got that dual density soft plastic, always will roll over and correct itself, um, can be fished super slow, can be rigged a ton of different ways. Um, and yeah, very versatile bait. So not just made to be fished as a toad on a straight retrieve, whether you rig it on a single hook or a double hook. Um, but you can also fish it on the back of a buzz bait. You can also fish it as a flipping bait. Um, you can also fish it as a jig trailer. So really cool bait with the noisy flapper. Then we moved on to the crazy flapper, which is a great trailer. Also a great flipping bait. So, um, I use that midsize in the 3.6 on the back of a chatter bait, on the back of a swim jig. I will also use it as a Texas rig bait or a wobble head bait um, as probably my next couple of most popular ways to use it. Um, and then we talked about the Easy Shaker just most recently and the Leech. Um, and the one last bonus that I almost forgot to mention is the saltwater version of the swing impact and swing impact fat. Okay. Huge noticeable difference in, uh, in action and durability. You still get a ton of action, but it's much more subdued in that saltwater version and you will get a couple more fish out of it. So Let's move on, talk about whatever else you guys want to talk about for a couple minutes. I've been on for an hour and 40 minutes. Who would have known that talking about like seven or eight Kitek baits 
would take so many words. But sorry about that, guys. Hope you enjoyed the content, though. Peyton says, Z-Man did a great job patenting the chatterbait, though. Yeah, exactly. That was my point in mentioning how important patents are. Uh, their patent only works in the U.S., so all these Japanese companies make their own chatterbaits with direct blade-to-head connections in Japan and sell them there, um, including the jackhammer. It, it started in Japan, and Z-Man found out through Brett Height that it's the best chatterbait on the market, so they paired up with Evergreen to bring it to the U.S., and so they're, they're splitting the profits on that. Um, and same deal with the Strike King Thunder Cricket. But if you go over to Japan or you look on some websites, you'll see that a bunch of Japanese companies make their own direct blade-to-head connection. They just can't sell it here in the U.S. because Z-Man will bring the heat and sue them because they can. Um, there are not international patent laws. so. Well, Neil, I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, some of this stuff you hadn't heard of before and that, that it might interest you. Oop, got a barking spider coming. Sorry about that. Um, Neil says, so is Gene LaRue the first one to ever put salt inside of a bait? Dude, I have no idea about that. Yeah, Peyton, if you're talking about the uh, the Easy Shaker, great smallmouth bait. You're right about that, man. Neil says he's got a couple of packs of the Zoom Swamp Crawler. Really love that bait. Super awesome bait, dude. Um, a classic and a really good value, especially if you're buying the original and not that Z3 that they make. Um, the Z3 is cool because it's essentially like a Robo Worm poor but the value goes way down because you only get 10 or 15 in a pack whereas the swamp crawler i think you get 25 in a pack incredible deal abe abe shows up laughing at that fart that i just dropped what's up dude um yeah zoom swamp crawler is killer as a drop shot bait wacky rid drop shot bait mm -hmm. love that Peyton says, have you ever heard of Super K jigs? I was slaying some smaller bass today on one of their finesse jigs. Super K jigs. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I'll check them out though, man. Send me a reminder. Send me a DM on Instagram and uh, remind me of that name just in case I forget. But thanks for adding me on Instagram last week, man. Glad we could connect. And again, I will send out your package on um, this upcoming week. Matthew says, I wanted to ask, uh, do you use magnum-sized worms in the summer? Like the Depths Kinko Worm, 13-inch. I've caught a couple of big fish on that bait in the summer. And really like them, but they're hard to get. Uh, but they do last forever. Um, no, not giant worms, okay? Um now, I will throw some big worms, right? Uh, the Zoom Old Monster and uh, one other big Zoom bait. And then I will throw like the uh, the Magnum Trick Worm from Zoom. And I will throw the, uh, the Z-Man Mag Fatties. Uh, really like the Mag Fatties and the Giant TRD. Uh, so I'll throw some big worms, you know, but we're talking in the seven to 10 inch range, nothing in that 12, 13, 15 inch range, nothing crazy, crazy. So yeah, that mag fatties from Z-Man is, is definitely one of my favorites. And I also modify it, uh, from time to time as well. Neil says, I guess Picasso slipped through the patent with their design, correct? Um, yeah, they do. I'm not exactly sure how, but it's not a direct blade to head, uh, because they're, um, 
their tie on uh, on the head is different, um, or maybe it's the blade. But yeah, it's it's got a, a unique little design to it. I've I've got one of them over here. I can show you. So I actually hadn't bought any of these um, until recently, but this is the new heavy cover shock blade pro. Um, it's like 11 bucks and really cool chatterbait here with a super nice heavy weed guard on there um, that's stiff and metal. So you can bend it out. It's got four separate strands, but if I can show you up close, yeah, it's the the connection between the blade and the head that is uh is different. So it's not a split ring. It's a bit closer to the head. Whereas Z-Man just goes straight on there. They've got a hole in the bottom of the blade that goes straight on. Picasso, on the other hand, has one more piece. But it attaches directly to the blade um, in a way that is different from most other vibrating jigs that would have like another hole like this down in the bottom where it's attached via a split ring. And so there's something about this connection that makes it just a bit more secure and allows this thing to start up fast. Uh, now, that said, I have not used the shock blades just yet. I've got one of them rigged up right now and ready to fish, but uh, haven't put in the time just yet. Abe says... Been here a while, just listening and learning. Good to hear it, man. Um, appreciate you being here. You don't always have to contribute to the chat, no problem. But uh, glad you're here. Sorry that uh, that I farted on camera. What can you do? Peyton says, you should make some recordings for Spotify because I definitely listen to some. Um, or because I, yeah. Listen to some podcast like stuff talking about fishing, tackle, and news. Okay. Um, I will keep that in mind, man. Um, I've considered downloading these live streams, not necessarily to turn them into audio clips, but um, to either post shorter clips here on YouTube as separate videos or to post them on Instagram. Now that Instagram is actually changing their platform moving forward, I don't know if you guys heard about that, knew about that, but Instagram is trying to move away from being a, a static photo sharing app and be more of a video platform um, just in terms of how they will monetize uh, the content on their platform. They want creators to really start making video. Um, so that the content is longer and more advertiser friendly and so that engagement and watch time, all of those things will go up. So um, we will see, but I've definitely considered, you know, every now and again, I, I will say a good little 60 second clip or something about a particular bait or show how to rig something or show something up close and uh, and wish that I had that to be able to post and show a shorter version because not everybody's going to hop on here and watch this entire two hour long stream uh, only to get a couple of good nuggets that might have come out of my mouth or uh, a couple of good little things that I showed on camera tonight. And I really appreciate the little group of you guys hanging out on here um, and spending your Friday evening with me. But a lot of people that will stumble across this video will usually only watch 10 or 20 minutes of the entire video. They don't know where to find the good nuggets necessarily. 
So anyway, um, yeah, YouTube shorts are a different ball game and I'm not totally sure just how into that, um, I intend to get, but, um, I think YouTube shorts, uh, the, the time frame is severely limited. So I, I could make some YouTube shorts if, if, you know, I'm showing how to rig something or I'm showing just like I did the difference between, you know, the Z-Man blade to head connection and the Picasso blade to head connection, showing it up close, could just do that little 15, 20 second clip and that would be worth it for sure. But if I'm explaining something and spending a minute or two talking about it, I don't think that fits into the category of shorts. Um, I would more likely just post a one or two minute video um, as a separate thing. So anyway, I appreciate the advice, guys. Um, and it's good to know that you guys might tune in to watch um, in a different format, whether it's short videos or on uh, a podcast, if we're just listening. Um, and also, I just I appreciate input in general. Matthew says, I'm going to start probably uploading fishing clips on there more instead of pictures on my stories. Um, yeah. For sure, man. Um, I wouldn't post on your stories, though. And I would use Reels and I would use IGTV uh, because that's where Instagram is really going to monetize moving forward. Um, not really on story posts. And the thing is, story posts uh, disappear, right? I mean, you can make highlights and then therefore keep them on your page beyond the 24 hour mark. But really, uh, IGTV videos, live streams and, um, and reels are where the money is going to be made by creators moving forward, um, on the platform of Instagram. That's not through brand deals, right? Thank you, Neil. I appreciate you, man. You know, Peyton, that is a good question. Um, I have before. I used to, you know, I've got a GoPro, like I mentioned, and I used to wear it every time I'd go fishing. Um, but to be frank with you, back in 2017, 2018, when I was really like exploring this area, trying to find new bodies of water, um, new ponds close to my house or little honey holes, um, I did things like a lot of people would. I hopped on Fish Brain. I hopped on Instagram. I hopped on uh, Fish Explorer and a few other platforms to find new places to fish. And I posted photos on some of those other platforms and found very quickly that people were doing the same thing to me that I was doing inadvertently to them. Um, and I wasn't sing, you know, singling anybody out um, in trying to just follow where they were going. I was just poking around, you know, like you would on Google maps, right? Just find a body of water, click on it, see what pictures are posted there, what comments there are about that body of water, whether there's decent fish, what kind of fish are in there, how recently they've been caught, what just general information to be able to figure out where to go fishing. And very quickly, I realized that people were noticing where I was fishing. I was giving that information away very quickly early on. And then I, I stopped posting um, on Fish Brain and a few other places. And for like a whole year or more on Instagram, I was posting a catch, a cast to catch video, like IGTV video, uh, like every day. I would post two or three times a day on Instagram. And one of those would always be um, a separate cast to catch video that would be you know, one or two minutes long of you seeing me out on the water, making a cast, working the bait, hooking, landing, catching a fish and releasing them. Um, but even then, 
I found that a lot of people who were local here in Colorado would comment and uh, blatantly announce to the world and other people where I was fishing. <clears throat> so I would post those same videos on YouTube, uh, not just on Instagram. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't fish a ton of bodies of water here in Colorado. And that's the issue is that um, I'm really only fishing at public bodies of water. And I don't necessarily want everybody knowing exactly where I am and exactly what I'm doing because then you get spot burned and uh, your places get kind of fished out and your fish get educated. And uh, that's, it's not necessarily what I want to do. So appreciate the question, Peyton, but that's why I don't really post a lot of um, actual out on the water fishing content very much, especially these days is just because I don't have a million and one places to fish. Ron says, only you and the bait man talk about the barking spider. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, I, I, I don't let them fly too often on the stream, but you know, my stomach's acting up a little bit right now. And uh, got to do what you got to do. <coughs> I think that's just my TV, but it sounded like one of my daughters all the way upstairs hollering. So if I got to dip out of here real quick, um, sorry about it. But I've also been on here for almost two hours, and I'm probably going to leave in a second anyway. Neil says, do you ever boil your old soft plastics to get them back in shape again? I definitely do if I have to. Yes, um, I'm in the same boat there. Um, I don't do it in quite boiling water, but yes. Somewhere between warm and hot water for sure. Um, and I will just dip the tails in. Um, so like on this swim bait, for example, you can see that it's it's turned to the side. So yes, I would just go start to boil some water. And right as it's starting to, you know, uh, it, it when it's not at a rolling boil, but definitely letting off some steam. I will just dip the tail in for maybe 10 seconds, pull it out, and then just, just let it sit. Um, I will do that from time to time, but uh, not all the time. You know, it's kind of like using Mend It. Um, it's a great tool, great strategy, great thing to do, um, but I, I don't do it all the time. Same goes for, like, you know, using scent and dyes um it's a great tool great thing to be able to do to color your baits um to dye the tips and tails of your baits but um not something i do all the time matthew says i only mend it on my jdm soft plastics uh that are hard to get yeah for sure uh, I do it primarily on swim baits more than anything. Um, not usually on standard soft plastics. You know, one that I I would like to do it on, but I don't know uh, how easy it would be to do is the freaking, uh, the Geek Crack Bellows Gill. Guys, I picked up, <coughs> I showed you in a recent stream, I picked up this smaller uh, 2.8 inch size Bellows Gill. And uh, took it out fishing a couple days ago and wrecked them. I mean, oh my god! I I caught probably eight uh, or ten fish in less than an hour. Um, each time I would move to a new spot, on my first couple casts, it would be automatic. Uh, the fish didn't expect it. They saw that profile. They came over. They smelled it, and they immediately. Uh, it's almost like they were fighting over it. Um, absolutely killer. So that 3.8 inch has been good for me, but I've had smaller fish not be able to eat it. That 2.8 inch size uh, is small enough to where small fish can easily get it in their mouths. 
Uh, I'll, I'll show you a couple pictures that I took. I, I wasn't able to get um, a ton of pictures with it, but uh, there's a small fish. I caught on a drop shot, wolfed it. Um, here's a tiny fish. Um, had that rigged on a Nico hook, just weightless. Uh, here's a slightly nicer fish. Yeah, a pound and a half fish or so on that same Nico hook. And literally, you know, uh, I'll tell you the timestamps on these. Uh, 1234, 1242, 1255, 1 o'clock, <laughs> tiny little guy, 130, uh, Uh, so those five were the only that I, I got pictures of, but caught a handful of uh, other fish on that exact same bait. So you can see in one of those pictures that uh, the bait got totally destroyed after a few fish. And I, I was having to, to choke it up on the hook uh, pretty frequently. That would be one of those baits where uh, it would really pay to have a screw lock keeper or something with a different uh, soft plastic bait keeper up on the front to really hold that bait in place. Because again, I was just using a Nico hook and it just, it was sliding down the hook like crazy. So <clears throat> that bellows gill is impressive. Really high quality bait, uh, great scent, great profile, good action. So drop shot and weightless. And on a Texas rig have been kind of how I've been fishing that thing for the most part this year. And uh, really liking it. Matthew says, I'm doing that swim bait underground. Big swim bait online tournament next month. Hopefully catch a beast and get a spot for October's tournament. Right on, dude. Good luck with that. Um, I don't know very much about that tournament, but hope it goes well for you, dude. All right, guys, I'm going to dip out of here. Two hours and two minutes. I did not expect to be on this long tonight, but it was fun for me. I hope it was fun for you guys, too. If you're one of the nine people in here right now and you haven't already hit the thumbs up, do me that solid real quick. There's already 12 thumbs up, so I figure most of you guys have. Uh, but really appreciate you hanging out tonight. Hope you guys learned something new. Hope you enjoyed the content. Um, feel free to hit me up outside the stream on Instagram. By email, Abe, I owe you an email back. Um, you said you emailed me, right? I just haven't freaking checked it yet. I, I told you that that would be your best chance of reaching me, but I haven't been on Facebook either, man. So uh, sorry, but I will I will check my email and hit you up. Um, Peyton got a hold of me much quicker on Instagram. I'll just say that, but. All right, guys, have a lovely rest of your Friday night. Have a good day tomorrow. There's a small chance I'll be on tomorrow night. If that's the case, feel free to uh, to throw any recommendations, suggestions at me that you might have if, if there's something specific you want to talk about. Otherwise, we'll just kind of uh, go with the flow like we did tonight, and, uh, and I'll come up with a cool topic, something to chat about, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, guys, have a great rest of your good your uh, night. Good night. Thank you for your support. Cheers.